Quadrax is made up of four channels of function generators, with their controls stacked from top to bottom and their outputs and trigger inputs laid out from left to right along the bottom. The behavior of a channel is determined by the mode selected by pressing these buttons on the right, and the current mode is indicated by the color of the button. Pressing the button cycles through the modes from left to right as they are indicated on the panel, which include AD, AHR, Cycling AD, Burst, and LFO. AD, or Attack Decay mode, is active if the LED is not lit up with any color. This mode goes through its rise and fall as soon as it receives a trigger, and ignores any held gates. This means that only the rise and fall controls will determine how long the envelope takes, and if you trigger it with a gate from a keyboard and hold down a key, or in this case the FSR, it will not sustain. For that reason, this type of envelope is more commonly used with trigger sequencers. Faster rise and fall times are created with the knobs counterclockwise to make things more snappy and percussive, while by turning the knob clockwise, the rise and fall times will slow to rates more suitable for swells and sweeps. The shape knob provides a linear response at 12 o'clock with logarithmic curves counterclockwise and exponential curves clockwise. Note that changing the response shape also preserves the envelope time, unlike some other envelope generators. AHR is Attack, Hold, Decay mode, and it is indicated by a red LED. It functions identically to AD mode, only now the envelope will be held high while a gate is sustained. For that reason, this mode is more appropriate for use with keyboards or sequencers with sustained gates. Cycle mode, shown when the button is green, is basically a repeating AD mode. As soon as the envelope completes its fall, it starts to rise again. This mode can also be thought of as a unipolar positive LFO mode, where the rise and fall times work together to determine the rate and shape of the LFO. This is different from standard bipolar oscillator LFOs, like a Dixie for example, where a single pitch knob provides the rate, and the LFO cycles between positive and negative voltages. Okay, now we get into the fun stuff. Next up is burst mode, indicated by the button lighting up yellow. In this mode, the channel will output a burst made up of a series of pulses. The rise knob now determines the total length of time these bursts will take, and the fall knob sets how many pulses will take place within the burst. Faster burst times will cluster the pulses closer together, and the shape knob now sweeps between different shapes of pulses, but also whether the burst rises or falls. With the shape knob counterclockwise, falling bursts are created, starting with square pulses, then saws, triangles, and sines. Moving the knob clockwise of center makes the bursts rise, with pulses mirroring the same shapes of sines, triangles, saws, and squares when fully clockwise. Last up, we have Bipolar LFO mode, shown by the button lighting up in magenta. In this mode, the rise knob now acts as a rate control, with slower speeds counterclockwise, and it speeds up as you turn it clockwise, just like pitch on a VCO. As you might expect, the shape knob controls the wave shape, but this is also influenced by the fall knob, which is now a morph control. These two knobs can be used to sweep continuously between various shapes. For example, with the shape knob clockwise and the fall or morph knob centered, it will produce a triangle wave. Then sweeping the fall or morph knob transitions between saw waves counterclockwise and ramp waves clockwise. Other more exotic wave folded and stepped waveforms are in there, but I'll let you discover them on your own. LFOs can easily be synced to a clock by connecting it to a channel's trig input. With a clock signal connected, the LFO's rate control becomes a multiplier clockwise and a divider counterclockwise. At 12 o'clock, the LFO will run with the same rate as the incoming clock. Turning the knob clockwise increases the rate in synchronized multiples, and counterclockwise uses synchronized clock divisions, with 64 being the maximum in either direction. So that covers your Quadrax channel modes. 
Next up, we'll check out the channel link modes to explore how you can make channels fire together or in sequence. Thank you.